I definitely think that this is the hardest video that I will ever make. And I am just gonna start out by saying thank you guys for congratulating Derek and I and our pregnancy. And a lot of you guys have been following us for a really long time and you know how hard we tried and how hard we're trying to conceive and have a baby and have a family of our own. We've been gone for two weeks. It's been two weeks as of today, exactly, that I've picked up a camera, filmed anything, um, really since I've felt okay at all. So I'm gonna try to get through this video because I feel like it's important for me to tell you guys and talk to you guys about how I feel and how my experience has been and everything. And I also just feel like I haven't like faced the world at all um, until today. So I just have like a little bit of a disclaimer and that's just that there might be some crying in this video. Um, also Derek is not gonna be in this video and that's just because he has been having a really hard time with this and i just feel like it's important for us to like move forward in this and to talk about it a little bit because i haven't talked about it at all and i feel like this video is going to be extra hard because i haven't talked about it and so i feel like now that i'm like saying these words that i lost my baby like it's making it more real and i feel like um like it's just making it um, I don't know. It's just like talking about it. I've just like been trying for the last two weeks to just put it out of my head. So it's hard. So forgive me for this. Um, two weeks ago from today, it was on a Friday. I, <clears throat> I, um, was spotting. So I was spotting for like a couple days before that. And I went to the ER and they showed me my baby's heartbeat and everything was fine which makes the situation even harder because two days before everything was fine exact 48 hours before my baby was fine um his or her heart was beating and uh two days later i was spotting more and i was like this just doesn't feel right to me like it doesn't feel right and no i saw the baby's heartbeat but it just didn't feel right so i went to the er again and I feel like it's important for me to talk about this and everything that happened because maybe you guys have gone through something similar. Um, I hope you didn't have the experience that I did because it was very traumatizing in every way possible and I just never thought that this would happen, you know? So I was spotting more, so I went to the ER and I was like, you know, like it's probably nothing. Like I'm probably, it's another thing where I'm going into the ER again. Like everything is probably fine. It's not that big of a deal. I just saw the baby's heartbeat two days ago. Everything is fine. Well, I went to the ER, Derek took me and even he was like, you know, it seems like everything is fine. Like, I don't think there's anything to worry about. Last time we were here, they made it seem like everything was fine. So, you know, we went in and immediately when they took me back, the woman that was working at the ER, the doctor there, it was a doctor and a nurse. And the doctor was like, you know, why are you in the ER again? Because I was just there two days ago, two days before that. And she was like, you know, why are you here? And I was like, well, because my OB told me to come here if I continue to spot. And she was like, well, let your OB know that we're very busy at the ER. And, you know, in that moment, I wasn't even thinking about anything. Like, I just was like, dude, just check out and make sure I'm good and I'll get out of here. I don't want to be here either. So, um, so I was just sitting there with Derek and, uh, she said that and I was like whatever dude just check out make sure my baby's good so they brought in like an ultrasound tech and they gave me an ultrasound on my stomach which they had done two days prior and it was fine like I said and they could see the baby because I was nine weeks pregnant so they could see the baby on the ultrasound through my stomach he let me know when he was doing the ultrasound and Derek know that he couldn't tell us what was on the screen because they needed to send it into a lab and then the lab would, you know, tell us the results, which I thought was a little weird because two days before the doctor showed me the baby, like showed me the movement. I, I recorded it, like everything was fine. 
So I thought that was a little bit weird, but I was like, okay, maybe it's just like a different ultrasound tech. That's why it's not a doctor or whatever. So, you know, he, the guy just started to look around and it just was taking a really long time. It was like 30 minutes of like him just looking. He's like, I'm just looking at your ovary now. And I kept asking questions like, hey, like, is everything okay? Like, please, can you just tell me something? Like, please give me something. And he was like, no, I'm sorry, I can't. So Derek was like trying to see what he was like taking pictures of and write stuff down and whatever and like look stuff up on like, you know, their codes and what all that. And he just like couldn't really like see what they were looking at. And I remember Derek even like seeing the baby in my uterus and being like, oh my God, thank God, like there's him or her. And um, he said, there's her because we thought it was a girl. And um, sorry, this is like really hard for me and I didn't think it was gonna be this hard. <laughs> Uh, but I feel like it's important to talk about this because I didn't know that so many women go through this and like so many families go through this so I feel like it's like my duty to like talk about it and maybe it'll be therapeutic I don't know so basically you know Derek saw the baby and he was like thank god like there she is you know and um and then um he said that he couldn't see my left ovary which in hindsight, I'm thinking, like, that's pretty smart to say because it's, like, okay, like, I don't know. I could tell that in that moment, I could kind of sense that something was wrong and he was trying to, like, you know, play it off. And I was, like, okay. So I had that thought in my head. Um, but I still was, like, you know what? Like, I think everything is fine. I ended up having to go to the bathroom, like, mid-ultrasound, you know? And... I got up and was like, is it okay if I use the restroom? He said, yeah, because we're done with this part anyway, so you can like go to the bathroom. And uh, when you come back, we're gonna do one more test because I didn't get to see like one of your ovaries very well. So I was like, okay, so I went to the bathroom and I just like went to the bathroom and I was just like, there was just like red in the toilet. So I was like, what the hell is going on? Like, this does not seem right. But I still had faith in like, was like dude you just saw your baby two days ago like everything is fine you're exaggerating some women bleed and it's totally fine I you guys were so great like you guys all like commented on my videos and like made me feel good about the situation like hey dude I you know that happened to me when I was pregnant and it was totally fine like all this stuff so I was like you know what like this happens to women I was researching like crazy and you guys know like you know web MDing everything like to see if this was normal or not and uh I just came back and I didn't even like say anything about, you know, what I saw in the toilet. I was just like, okay, whatever. I'm just gonna like, you know, do this next test. So he did another ultrasound a different way. And when he did that, you know, it took another like 20 minutes and it was just like confusing. Now that I'm looking back, I'm like, okay, he did that to like, you know, look and make sure that there wasn't a heartbeat, I'm sure. Just to like, you know, be sure. So he ended up walking you know he was like doing the other ultrasound and Derek was there and I remember Derek was like you know are you okay and I was like yeah like I know everything is fine babe like don't worry about it you know because I really did believe that in the moment I was like you know I'm healthy I'm really healthy I eat well I exercise daily I have not been working out like hard I have not been you know like everything I'm doing everything right like I did everything right of course this is my miracle baby like I'm doing everything right you know I've had a very healthy pregnancy with my son I I just had no doubt in my mind that everything was okay and he was like are you sure like and Derek was a little bit more from the beginning like something seems wrong he was like reading people's body language and the nurses and everybody's body language and he just was like thinking something was wrong but I was like no like I was trying to convince him like everything is fine so the doctor finished the second ultrasound and told me that you know they had to wait for the lab results or whatever and I was like is there anything you could tell me and at that point there was a nurse in the in the room too and I was like what about you I think her name was Diana I was like what about you Diana like is there anything you could tell me and she was like, no, I'm sorry. Like, I don't really know how to read that, but I'm, of course, I'm sure that they did. I just don't think that it was, you know, their place to tell me, but I wish that they would have because I think that that, like, that time period just waiting for a woman is just, like, really tough. So, you know, I'm just sitting there and I'm waiting and Derek's, like, checking his phone. He's like, I'm going to reschedule my appointment. He had an appointment to go to, like, at four. And I was like, no, don't worry about it. Just go. 
um just go right now like don't worry about it i will be fine babe everything is fine i just saw our baby two days ago i promise like don't worry about it at all like go to your appointment i don't want you to miss this like you know whatever and he's like no like let me stay with you and i was like no just go so he was like okay just call me you know if anything changes or whatever and i was like yeah it's fine like i we literally live two seconds away from the er and so derek ended up going to his appointment and i was just sitting there and i knew it was going to take a while so he said it could take like 30 minutes to an hour to wait for this lab result. So I'm just waiting and, you know, I'm texting Derek. I think I texted him something like, you know, like, I feel like everything is fine. Don't worry. So um, this part's going to be hard for me because it was very traumatic. And uh, it was like, um, I just wish that like it would have been handled differently also, but also, I mean, just in general, it's a traumatic experience, but, uh, yeah. So basically, um, finally, like it felt like forever, but I was just, I was still was just, you know, having hope and faith and whatever. And the doctor came in the same doctor that I, told me like they were busy or whatever. I came in with a nurse and she was like, word for word I'm not joking I'm not exaggerating whatever like and I'm only telling you guys this because I just like I cannot believe that like this is the way I was told that I was losing my baby but uh she told me she was like okay how far along are you like in that voice and I was like I'm nine weeks like what the what is going on tell me like is that the first thing you ask for me and she was like well you know you're only measuring at like seven weeks and uh which didn't make sense to me and at all because I was just there two days ago and that wasn't the case so she was like well you're only measuring seven weeks and there's no heartbeat and that's exactly how she told me and I was like what like and she continued to talk and I just like stopped her and I was like wait what like I just had an ultrasound two days ago and she was like well that's because your baby was alive two days ago and she said it to me like that. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, what is going on? Like, I didn't have energy or whatever to like cuss this chick out or talk to her or whatever. Like, about how she was talking to me, I just like, just broke down and I just was crying. And I was like, fuck, dude. Like, <laughs> the nurse came over and I don't know if she felt bad for how, you know, the doctor was talking to me or whatever. But, uh. The nurse came over and like patted my back a couple times and the doctor threw a packet, literally just tossed a packet in my lap that was like threatened miscarriage, you know? And I was like, what do, like what? And I just called Derek on speaker and I was like, just please come and get me. And he just knew right away. And he like, I don't even remember hanging up the phone. And the nurse just told me like, you need to go wait in the lobby. So, you know, I just was like, what the, f like, wait what is happening and you know the way that that was told to me like almost gave me like hope that the baby was still okay because I was like wait what like because it just was no information at all so I was like maybe she could be wrong like she seems like she's having a really bad day like maybe she's wrong so you know it's kind of messed up like I know it's not like an ER doctor's job to you know whatever but like at the same time like you know that's you don't know my story you don't know that my husband and I have been trying for literally five years to get pregnant you don't know how much it took for him to go to so many doctors to get surgeries to you know go through this pain to you know all of these things, all these tests, how long it takes, so the waiting time in between, nobody understands that until you go through it. And that shit sucks and it hurts. So when we finally got pregnant, like, I'm sure there's going to be a million comments that are like, dude, why didn't you wait to like announce this? And like all the, because we tried for five fucking years and it, we were really excited. Like we, we just could not we couldn't just like hold it in like this is our job like youtube is our job we want to share stuff with our people like our fans our friends our family we consider you guys like family like we wanted to tell everyone like we're finally pregnant like finally and um that's why i didn't wait because i was extremely excited and i just couldn't contain it and like you know looking back i don't like think i should have handled it differently but i can't help but blame myself and it's that's another thing that just goes hand in hand with this so i called Derek. he came i just remember going to the bathroom in the er and i just like sat down on the floor and i was just crying and i just couldn't like there was so many people in there i just couldn't like 
face anything. I couldn't like lift my head up and I couldn't like, you know, look at anyone. I couldn't do anything. And Derek like physically carried me out and like put me in the car. And I just like, I don't even know how I got out of there because I just was like sobbing like uncontrollably. And you know, Derek was like, it's okay, babe. Like we're gonna try again. Like, you know, trying to be as supportive as possible while he's going through just a di whole different, I don't know how, you know, a husband or a man feels in this situation. I just knew how I felt. And uh, I've never felt like a pain like that before because, you know, this baby just means and meant so much to us. So, you know, <laughs> it was just really hard. And uh, I came home and I just laid in bed. And I don't know if it was like my body's like response naturally to just feel numb. But, you know, I just felt really numb. Like, I just feel like I my body just took over like, Dude, you gotta just like, you know, feel like flatline basically. And I just laid in bed for a day and I texted my my OB, my regular OB, and I texted her and just said, I'm having a miscarriage. And um, I think that night is when I started feeling really, really crampy. And like, just so I've never had, I never had cramping or anything in my pregnancy up until then. So I just was like, yeah, this is it. Like I'm for sure, like, you know, passing the baby. And the ER nurse had told me, like, you know, you, you are going to, your body's going to try to naturally pass the baby and itself. And, um, you know, hopefully you don't have to have a DNC or whatever. And I just was like, oh my God. Like, I didn't even know what that meant. Like, I don't know. What I, like, I just was like, what? Like, it, there was just so little information given to me. I just was so confused. And I called, I was so confused that I called a, a the doctor, like, that my OB has listed, like, that was just working. Uh, the triage center or whatever and I called and I was just like hi like I'm having a miscarriage I think because I still didn't like understand and I was like can you just give me some information like on how I'm supposed to be feeling because I don't know what's normal and what's not like I'm having a lot of pain like 10 out of 10 and I can handle pain pretty well but I just I've always said my whole life which is so funny like I've always said I would give birth for a million women if I could because of how easy and amazing the experience was when I gave birth to my son but this was something completely different. You know, I was in so much pain, like 10 out of 10, just so much pain starting that night. And I just called him and I was like, you know, like, and the doctor was so nice. And I just was like, remember thinking, I just wish that you would have been there when I was at the ER because it just, it just was presented to me in such a shitty way. And he told me, he was like, you know, don't, the first thing he told me, he's like, do not blame yourself. This did not happen because of you. <laughs> And I think that as women, I'm trying to be as strong in this video. I think that as women, like it's it's natural for us to uh, blame ourselves right away because it's like, what did I do wrong? This, I was supposed to be carrying this baby. Like, you know, my husband has had these so many issues with being pregnant, like getting you pregnant. Now you're pregnant and you fucked it up. Like, what did you do? And I know that that's not true now, but you know, in the moment it's like, fuck, like, you know, you blame yourself and you're just like, what did I do wrong? So, uh, you know, I went through that for sure. And he just told me like, it's not your fault. It's nobody's fault. And he said, you know, you guys, the chances of you having a second miscarriage back to back are drastically lower than the first time. He's like, you are a healthy young woman. It doesn't seem like you have any issues. Like, you know, all this stuff, like positive thinking and all of these things that I just really needed to hear. And I'm so grateful for him. I don't know his name, but I'm really grateful for you. If you are watching this video by some, I don't know, whatever. I just like, I just want you to know how much that helped me in that time because I was just like really going through it. So, uh, yeah, <clears throat> sorry. So Derek and I just laid in bed and I just like, like I said, felt numb. And I'm sure some of you moms can relate to me on that or women can relate to me on that. Like, I just felt numb. I felt for the next probably like seven days. Um, for the next three days, I was in extreme pain. I didn't realize and I wasn't told how physically painful it would be because, you know, I was a little bit further along, you know, usually after the eight week mark, you're, you're like more so in the clear than after. So I... It just, it was painful. It was really painful. And 
I didn't go to my OB until Monday because she told me, you know, your your body's gonna try to pass the baby and then we'll reevaluate on Monday and make sure, confirm that you're having a miscarriage. And by that point I was, you know, it was obvious that I was having a miscarriage. So I was cramping like, like I was in giving birth. So, <clears throat> you know, I, I just don't really remember the next few days, like three or four days really at all. I just was like laying in bed I couldn't really get up. Uh, I I had, you know, a couple friends come over and be there for me. Derek was dealing with it in his own way. And I didn't really care because I just was like broken. And I was like, just felt like things just were not gonna get better, you know? And even though I don't look like it now, you know, it did get better. I deleted my Instagram app. I have not logged into it since. I've had a lot of anxiety about that because I just feel like you know, I just keep telling myself, like, you jumped the gun and telling everyone you, like, you know, you told everyone too soon and you should have waited. And I, I, part of me believes that and a part of me doesn't because I know that I was just so excited about this baby. So that's why I told everyone and, you know, announced it. So I haven't logged into my Instagram. I feel like I can't really face anything yet. And this Monday is the first time. So five days, four days ago, I, was the first time I left my house and like really felt like myself a little bit, you know. I still don't feel like myself at all. I haven't worn makeup in weeks. I haven't, you know, gotten out of a big sweater <clears throat> because I had a baby bump, you know. I really did and I just was, I posted a picture on Instagram about it. I like was so excited and I, I'm not pregnant anymore. And it's crazy how quick that that happens and how quickly you're, you know, people are expecting you to move on and, and try again and all these things. And it's like, damn, I'm still grieving the loss of this baby. And I just feel really sad all the time. And not only that, but you don't think about the things that, like for me, I still had morning sickness for like three days. And I just was like throwing up in the morning and I'm like, damn, like this shit is so confusing. And not only that, but it's like little things like you naturally when you're pregnant, you try to protect your stomach and protect your baby <laughs> and uh <clears throat> I was trying to protect my baby all the time like you know if the dogs were around or whatever I just was always touching my baby and my stomach and whatever and I just I just for day even now like sometimes like I'll forget that I'm not pregnant so I, I can actually lift something that's heavier or I can like bring in the groceries or I can like go up and down the stairs a lot or whatever and I, I catch myself like holding my stomach and stuff like that and it's like those little things that you know the doctor can't prepare you for <laughs> and a doctor can't tell you anything especially that doctor that was with me and if you're watching this I sincerely hope you know how much your reaction to my miscarriage like affected my miscarriage because I felt very alone in that moment and I as any woman does and I just don't think that that was right so fast forward to now uh i haven't picked up a camera i haven't like i said left and since monday monday was a good day for me i have like good days and bad days obviously derek and i are excited to try again and we're going to try again and of course i i'm gonna take you guys on that journey just like i did with this and even if i'm two weeks pregnant i'll tell you that's not gonna change i don't think but I just want my baby back. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just like want my baby back. So <laughs> um, I'm trying to be strong because I don't want to be like, uh, it's, I know it's been two weeks and you know I'm on the I really am feeling better and that's crazy to think about because that I was worse than this but I think that also because I'm talking about it like I said like it's just a little harder so I know I just want to tell you guys thank you for just all of the support and you know all of the the amazing stuff you guys did to congratulate us on this pregnancy and just be there for us and give me advice and you know, I'll be there for Derek and it was it was really cool. And I was like looking through comments on my YouTube channel and it was like so many women 
supporting other women and talking to me about pregnancy and telling me I'm doing great and telling me to rest. It just felt like such a cool community and now I just feel like that's been like taken, you know? So I want to say thank you for that and I want you guys to know that we, even though I look hopeless right now, we have not left, we haven't given up hope and Derek and I are ready to try again and uh, I would just, I'm cleared for my doctor in the next like week and a half to actively start trying again, which is cool. Uh, granted, everything is out of my uterus, which on last, I'm sorry, this last Monday, not this last Monday, but the Monday before, so two weeks ago. I, the, the one day after my miscarriage, I went into the, to my OB, like I said, and it was another traumatic experience where I was passing the baby while I was there. So she had to physically take parts of the baby out, like with a forceps and like put it in like a specimen cup. And that was pretty traumatic too, because my body, not only was I in so much physical pain, but just seeing that and feeling that was just really hard and luckily my ob is amazing she's great so she did give me an ultrasound that day and it looked like everything was pretty much passed out of my uterus except for like a couple you know a little a little bit of clotting so there's that and yeah i guess i just wanted to keep you guys in the loop and in a way this is therapeutic for me because we could try again and i can tell you guys what's going on originally i was on the fence about even making a video about this because I wanted to get pregnant again and then tell you guys like, okay, you know, this is why I'm this many weeks pregnant and not this many weeks and we had a miscarriage and all this stuff because I wanted to celebrate with something happy. But I feel like it's important because my doctor told me that literally one in four pregnancies end like this. And she just told me like, you won't get any answers you know that you're not going to get what you're looking for because of course i'm like why why did this happen how can i prevent this from ever happening to me again and it's just not fair to not know why i would love to just know why like i just want to know why this happened and i can't so and i won't and i have to accept that and part of me making this video is accepting that and i hope that if any of you guys are going through this situation that you get something out of this video and I guess the biggest thing I could say is be sensitive to people that are having going through the same thing as me or have experienced the same thing as me because I've heard so many like little jokes from you know friends and family that of course don't mean anything but buy this but you know they make pregnant oh I look pregnant or just jokes that make me oh it just like gives me like a shudder and I'm just like broken so I guess be sensitive and ladies if you are going through something similar I can't tell you from a man's perspective like I said because it's just so much for me to handle that I just don't really know how to give advice but I think women if you guys are going through this just know that it wasn't your fault and like the doctor told me like it was not your fault because it's easy to blame yourself for sure and I I'm going to go because I am a mess, but I love you guys and I want to say thank you so much for just being there for us and supporting us and being our DSO family and, you know, I'm not going to give up hope and I'm going to try again and we're going to do this and I hopefully, hopefully everything goes well and yeah. I am praying that our next pregnancy is successful and I'm hoping all of you guys have successful pregnancies because I had so many women that were, you know, and are still pregnant and like were pregnant around the same time I was and the same as many weeks and everything. So I hope you guys are doing well and I want you to know that if this has happened to you, that it gets a little bit better. <laughs> it takes a little while. Like I said, it's been two weeks and I'm just now starting to feel like I can face the world obviously that's why I'm filming this but I really love you guys and I hope that I have a happy video for you guys soon but right now I don't feel happy I don't really feel anything at all and I do love you guys and yeah that's all so until next time